service by singing our first hymn number 445. Good morning and welcome to church on the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pause for a moment to thank the Lord for the week past and to commit our ways into his hands in this new week. Our service continues on page one of our red service booklets. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding into our hearts for your love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Please be seated. Time for Emmanuel praise, and this morning we're singing number 121 and 128, and I'll call the other numbers out afterwards. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Praise ye the Lord, praise him for your servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun. Going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun 
is going down all the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise him for your servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore. Glory, glory to the highest glory. To the almighty glory to the Lamb of God. And glory to the living word. Glory to the Lamb. We sing glory, glory to the highest glory, to the almighty glory, to the Lamb of God, glory to the living word, glory to the Lamb. I give glory, 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 glory to the Lamb. I give glory, glory, all the glory, glory, all the glory, glory to the Lamb. I give glory to the Lamb. I give glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, the highest glory, to the almighty glory, to the Lamb of God, glory to the living world, glory to the Lamb. We give glory, glory, all of the glory, glory, we give glory. Glory to the Lamb, oh, we give glory, glory, all of the glory, glory, all the glory, glory to the Lamb, we give glory to the Lamb, we give glory to the Lamb. God is good. We sing and shout. If God is good, we celebrate. God is good. No more we doubt. If God is good, we know it's true. And when I think of His love for me, my heart fills with praise, and I feel like dancing. For in His heart there is room for me, and I want with them to fight. Oh, God is good. We sing and shout, if God is good. We celebrate, God is good. No more we doubt in God is good. We know it's true. And when I think of His love for me, my heart feels depressed, and I feel like dancing. For me, in His heart there is room for me. So I run with them to the light. Oh, God is good. We finish this morning with number 179. Hold me, Lord, in your arms. Feel me, Lord, with your spirit. Touch my heart with your love and let my life glorify your name singing hallelujah singing hallelujah Singing hallelujah. 
First reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 to 19a. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 25. 
Brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave against, again to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been grown in as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we, are, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. We hope for what he already has. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. We stand for our gradual hymn, number 24. Angel voices ever singing. Angel voices ever singing round the
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the book of Matthew. Jesus told a parable to the crowd. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed ears, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good weed? or good seed in your field, I should say. Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Let us pray. Almighty God, May I speak in your name as God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Before we continue proper into our sermon, our cantor will sing number 96 for us.
God is indeed blessed in all circumstances. Let us remember to keep on blessing the Lord. And that song shows our own mortality. It reigns forevermore. And we are only passing through. Our text is taken from our Old Testament reading, Genesis 28, verse 17. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Let me pose a question to you. No reply. Who has never been afraid? Put your hand up. Who has never, oh, if you don't want to, who has never been afraid? Who has never been fearful? Ah, see, that's what makes us human. Yeah. God is never afraid, never fearful. Have you ever felt uneasy in a new place or house, in an environment, or beside some people? We have lost some of this instinct. You know, it's like the movies. They know that there is danger and they keep on going in there. I call it being stupid. The first sign of danger, what do you do? You run. Run in the opposite direction. This, in the last few months and even now, hundreds of millions of people are very, very afraid. Very, very afraid. If you are not afraid of um, corona or COVID-19, whatever name you want to call it, you are either being very naive or, like most people, burying their heads in the sand in denial, or there must, there must be something that you've been doing or smoking that um, makes you very confident. But talk to those who have been at the point of death, induced coma. They will tell you how precious life is, how it is to be afraid. We live in a world that is infused with more than enough fear. And Jacob was afraid. He was running away because of his bad deed from last week. We talked about that. But there is one thing I would like you to hold on to. And this is my gift to you very early on. Matthew 10, 28. Let me read half for you. It's much easier and you can go on to 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body. And then verse 31, fear not therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Corona can only kill the body, not the soul. They say a coward dies a thousand deaths, a brave man dies only once. I'm not saying we should go out looking for corona to prove a point, is to say we have to learn to live with the life that we have got right now. Not to be, to live in fear, because that will have a disastrous effect on your mental well-being. We have to embrace each day with common sense. Before corona, there were more stuff around the planet to be fearful of. And after Corona-19, there will be COVID-29 or 24 in years to come. As I've kept on saying, we have lived with viruses on this planet. Many of them are benign. Many of them are useful to us. The question is, what triggers this? And we'll go on into our sermon. It's just for you to hold on to. Fear, there is healthy fear. 
and destructive fear. Let's go for the healthy one, common sense, and do all that we can. Now, this was a man who was very afraid. In Genesis, as, we've, as I said earlier, we heard of Jacob's dream of the ladder going from heaven to earth. And afterwards, with our text, how awesome is this place? And the stone that he put his head on, he set it up as a pillar and poured oil on it to consecrate that place as a holy ground because he could feel the presence of God in it. This is none other than the house of God. You know, it's interesting that um, in, in the Ethiopian church, and I use the word church, they don't call their house of prayers, you know, the church. They say the house of, I think it's paid something, house of, the house of God. And this is none other than the house of God. And at times by coming in, we have lost what it is to come into the awesome presence of God. And we need to rediscover that. We have just rediscovered what pure fear is. And I think I've said this before. When people say to me, oh, there is no God. Prove it. I can't see him. You know, if I can touch him, I believe there is God. Well, you can say the same. There is no corona because you can't touch it. You can't feel it. But <laughs> you do see the effects. And you can be in denial all you want. And it's also a form of evil. And I say this to all those in power and authority. Who have been denying and watching their people die. This is throughout the world. That there is something called corona but a small bug. When tens of thousands are dying, human compassion means you need to pause. Swallow your pride for the sake of those who need to live. And we all need to, we all have a part to play in that. That's just a sideline. Going back, you know, as you enter, this is none other than the gate of heaven in any house of God. As you enter, you bring your praises, your fears, your joy, and all your hope that you had for the week and for the new week to come into God's presence to share with your father that dad have arrived. Last week was a bit rough, but I'm thankful that I'm here today. Thankful to you that I'm alive. Thankful to you that yes, I came in last week. I didn't have any twinge or pains, but I've got a pain in there. Lord, I'm bringing that also to the foot of your altar. We need to be, con to be in the mood of constantly thanking God for all that he has done for us. The stone, you can say, is the foundation of the church, which is Christ. As in, in, a, you know, in Genesis 21, 40 to 44, Christ is the cornerstone, Acts 4, 11. And the oil, you can say, signifies our Lord Jesus Christ as the holy and anointed one of God. Matthew 1, 18. Then the question that you might pose to me or I'm posing to you is, what has the house, the stone, and the oil got to do with fear, peace, joy, sadness, good, and evil? What have all this got to do with the house of God? What have they got to do in our homes, in our own lives, in the world around us? A lot, I will say. In the gospel reading, in the parable of the wheat and the weeds, it builds up on last week's parable of the sower in Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Here, our Lord Jesus Christ gives attention to the enemy who has sown his seed among Christ's people in the world. As falsehood comes after truth and false prophets come after 
through prophets. So the Antichrist will and has come after the Lord Jesus Christ first coming. Evil tend to come after good. Garden of Eden, our father and mother were in perfect bliss. Evil came afterwards. Enemies come after friends. Most of you are old enough. If, you were to, if I was to say to you, do you remember that friend you had 50 years ago or 40 years ago? You will have stories to tell. You thought for 30 or 40 years they were your friend, didn't you? I say to people, suck it up, grow up. That is life. You cannot spend your life thinking everyone will be your enemy. If not, you will be paralyzed with fear. I just say to people, far better to have loved than never to have loved at all. Everything has its pros and cons, but to love is far much better. If the world can learn to love more, we will be in a far better place today. People will not be going out buying 600 toilet rolls while nobody has any. Yeah. People will not be so greedy in a world of plenty, buying 40 tons of baked beans. I'm just making it up, you know, to see how ludicrous it was. You know, there's a queue behind you and you empty the whole shelf. If the person in front of you have emptied the shelf, will you have anything to empty? I remember going into a shop and um, it just said, you know, they had, oh, you can take two butter. So I thought, oh, rather than coming back again, I got my two. And um, this woman had about two dozen anchor butter and said, actually, Sorry, ma'am, you're only allowed two. Oh, but I've got children. I'm thinking, hold on. Is it butter for lunch today? <laughs> you know, the hank of 500. Is it butter for lunch? Oh, I got four. I'm sorry, ma'am. And she went ballistic on this poor woman. She said, I'm sorry, ma'am. And I was just thinking, if the people before you had emptied it, will you have all those? She had about two dozen butter. I'm thinking, what are you going to do with two dozen butter? It is not essential. You can even do without it. But she vented and cursed this poor woman, and I just shook my head. So when it came to me, and um, I think I had about two, and it was only meant to be one, I can't remember. So I said, it's okay. I said, the sign there was two. Oh, they've changed it because there's been a big demand, and somebody forgot to take down that you only allowed one butter per customer. Which made sense. Why would you go and store two dozen butter in your deep freezer? We need to learn human compassion. Think not just for ourselves, but for others. And from there, this poor woman doing her job begin to do what? Have enemies. No matter what you do, people will resent you. Whether you wear black shoe today, and then tomorrow you change to brown, is a source of contention for some people. You never know who is looking at your shoe. You never know you can make enemies by changing your specs. You know that. You remember when you were growing up? I mean, I don't know about girls, but you had your bicycle. You either got more friends who want to ride your bicycle, and some who envied you. Isn't that right, Mr. Johnson? Yep. And if your bike was the right red color, man, you're ruling, the, you're ruling the town. You begin to make enemies at a very early age for something that is so mundane and irrelevant in the greater scheme of things. And so, as children of God, don't waste your time thinking about them. Concentrate on your life and doing good and move on. Christ, the moment he began his ministry, had enemies. The day he was born, he had enemies for being alive. Remember Herod? And innocent children got killed for it? It is human, no matter what anybody will tell you, to have enemies, even though you don't want them. You will prefer to be their friends. Envy. 
pride, arrogance are dangerous. And unfortunately, these are some of the fears that have ruled the world. And in the coronavirus, we've seen some of the extremes of human wickedness. And yet we've seen such goodness that you never thought existed in the world. Selfless sacrifice, while those around us think only of themselves. People thinking and doing stuff for the greater good. We should always be prepared because in the parable of the wheat, wheat and the weeds, they were sown in together. The enemy came in deception and threw in the weeds to destroy. And we, the world, we, God's children, are the wheat. The evil one comes and throws evil in our midst. And as in that parable, the landowner said, the servant says, should we pluck them out? Unfortunately, when they are growing up, they look equally the same. You will pull out the good wheat. So he says, no, let them grow together. That is why, whether at home, in family, in church, in the world around us, that is why evil people exist. If God has to take them out, we will also not be around here. It also gives them a chance to do what? To change their ways. There is a saying. It says, do you know what a lizard is? It says, all lizards lie flat on the ground, gasping, because they're trying to cool down. You can never tell which one has got stomach upset. Because all of them are going, you can't. You do not know the heart of a man. Only God knows our hearts. But unfortunately, we tend to judge by appearances. And when we do that, and you've done it, I've done it, you've made a mistake. And may God forgive us all for those mistakes. I remember the story of someone. They, they didn't even think about it. You know, life goes on. You haven't heard from somebody for about two or three years. You don't think much about it. Then they had a phone call. Oh, how are you? It's a long time. I forgive you. And they thought, forgive me for what? When I said X, Y, Z to you, you told W, K. And the person said, but I don't know who W, K is. Oh, I thought you did. You see, you told somebody something. With your own mouth, you told somebody else. With your own mouth, you told somebody else. You told the whole universe. So when it comes back to you, not just one person, the whole universe, you are now saying a man or woman from Mars said X to you, and you are blaming the wrong person. So for three or four years or more, you had a grudge against someone who didn't even know somebody had a grudge who was totally innocent. Next time when you're in doubt, quickly take your phone and ask. Yes? And if you've told more than two people, zip your mouth and learn your lesson. Don't even ask. If I've told two people, I will shut my mouth, I will never ask. Get your facts right. That is the problem we have in the world today. Everybody's an expert on coronavirus. Yeah? Even people who have no idea that one plus one equals two can tell you about the, um, I'm sorry, Anne-Marie, you are the expert in this. I'm not a medical person. They'll tell you about the equation for corona. But if you put one plus one, they'll tell you four. And they're giving you the equation for coronavirus. If you believe them, you are doubly stupid. Common sense. There are ways, you can, places you can go to to get your facts right. Evil always runs in the world. Because either for some people it's just silliness, not realizing the gravity of what they are doing. And so that person hated somebody, bore a grudge for years, and that person was innocent and didn't even know. And the same is true for all of us. We have either been accused or not accused of what we have or not done. And we have done the same, and may God forgive us all of that sin of omission. I'm just bringing it down to our level as we blame our leaders. 
for their many bigger misdemeanors. Evil takes many, many forms. The question you have to ask yourself is, are you wheat or weed? Which camp do you belong to? If you are one of those who is a weed, before the harvest comes, you have the chance to change. If you're a wheat, don't get choked by the enemy around you or the evil around you. You don't have to take part in it. You don't have to buy into it. Remember the school ground for you children? When somebody is friends and nobody is talking to one person and the poor child is alone, it's not nice. Go and talk to them. Nobody loves being alone. You, never, you don't even know what burden they are carrying in their mind or in their lives. Be friends with those that people do what? Don't want to be friends with. Unless there's a special good reason for not being friends with them. If not, point it out to your teachers to say, ma'am, sir, Joe has nobody talking to them. Then they can deal with that. Are you a wit or a weed? In your day-to-day -day life, among friends, in your family, in the world around us. And if you're a wit, what are you doing to deepen your root into our Lord Jesus Christ? Because the weed has only one agenda, to squeeze the life out of you. And unless you are rooted and grounded in Christ, you won't survive. You know how powerful and strong trees are? Have you seen some creeper weeds go around it and suck the life out of a massive tree. The only way to save that tree is to cut those creepers at the bottom. And even if you do, if you're not careful, if there's any chance of them getting a bit of soil, they're going back in again. Weeds can choke a tree to death. A big tree. So don't underestimate the weeds in the world or around you. Do not do what? underestimate their tenacity to survive and continue their evil ways. Is Christ your cornerstone? Or have you let apathy and falsehood let you, let you sell your birthright like our father Esau for a loaf of bread and a bowl of pottage? Many of us do that because I want to be like Job. I want to be like Mary Han. You don't want to be yourself. That's what you have in the world of celebrities. I'm sorry, no offense meant to celebrities. I'm happy for all of them. But in real life, what have they seriously contributed to society or achieved? It's a question I put to people. What have we done to make the world a better place? And my pet hate is when we have banded, good hate, you know, this age, I'm giving my time. You got 40 million pounds, write a check for that amount of money and give your time. You are taking from those who have less. Do you see the logic behind that? I'm so, you know, I, I know this will go on the YouTube or whatever it is, maybe somebody's listening. It's a form of evil. They are also giving their time. They are giving even more. It's called the widow's might. Where those with less give more than those with more. It's a form of evil. Evil comes in many guises. Just because it's legitimately right doesn't make it right. It's one planet. We are one human race. We either live together or we sing together. People seem to forget that and Corona is bringing that to the forefront. If there's anything that you can say is good about Corona. That no matter who you are, no matter what you are, we can all be infected or afflicted by this nastiness. 
and it shows our human mortality and frailty. Evil runs in many ways. Don't just look for the obvious. Look in the structures of society and how things are put to us. And where we can, let us challenge those things and make, and make a stand and make a difference. When you challenge, there's a reaction. Christ challenged, challenged the authorities and the structures of his days and the norms of what was right and wrong. And he paid the price for it. He has paid the price for us. At least in the Western Hemisphere, nobody's calling you to what they call a red martyrdom. You might suffer for a day or two, but you will have said your peace and made a difference. Let us go out today as wheat and make a difference in the world around us. We don't have to be weeds. You don't have to follow the ways of the weeds. Don't sell your birthright. And don't be spiritual or mentally lazy. This short passage in Matthew 13, 24 to 30, also explains why, let's deal with ourselves, the church at times neither condemns or con nominal members, the weeds in the church, as I call them. Every church has them. And I pray that you are not one of them. Every family has them. Every office has them. Every workplace has them. They are on this planet. 1 Corinthians 5, 12 to 13. Should we read that out or you have time for that? Let me see if I can get that for you. 1 Corinthians. Five, twelve to thirteen. Apologies, my. For what I do, what, what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? If you go to verse thirteen, judge, God judges those outside. Drive out the wicked person from among you. 1 Corinthians 5, 12 to 13 or 14, says it all. You are in denial if you don't believe they exist. Just as wheat, good people, will be destroyed in weeding out the bad people, so also many people who might ultimately find salvation will otherwise be lost if condemned before our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why the church tolerates the weeds in our midst, so that they might have a chance at salvation. And to do that, we also have to learn patience, endurance, and hope that it is all worth it at the end to save a fellow brother or sister. At the harvest, as we heard, the angels are the reapers. And, and so the question is, are we all destined? Are we all on the same ship of faith to the same destination, our Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you a wit who have made your allegiance with the evil one? Don't allow weeds into your life. Weed your surroundings very well. Root and ground yourself on Christ the cornerstone by prayer, studying scripture, and by being the person God made you to be, not by being a clone or a parrot of somebody else. Too many people are clones and parrots of others, and they will never achieve or be who God has made them to be. You are singularly made and unique in God's eyes. Why will you despise your birthright like our father Esau? Why will you despise it so you can be somebody else? Sell your birthright for a bread and a bowl of porridge. Remember, Corinthians, we are called to live with those around us to make a difference. And as I said earlier on, 
do not let us live our life in fear, but in hope, in joy, in preservation, knowing that our lives belong to God. Let us go out today, taking all due precautions, your God-given common sense, and your gut instinct when you think, oh, I fear something, you dare really need to do what? To fear it and walk away. Common sense and relying on the gift of the Holy Spirit to direct your feet and path in the ways of righteousness. So let us go out today learning to love God, to fear him, and to remember that, yes, we are afraid even our own homes to be an awesome place, to be a spiritual powerhouse where God resides with us in the grace of his Holy Spirit. Matthew 10, 28 and verse 31 to 32. Read it. That's my gift to you. If you have to fear anything, when I say fear God, it means to love God in scripture. People think it's to be afraid. No, 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 no. That is not. When we say, oh, I fear my parents, or you do that, or somebody older, it's a mark of respect. Because you re in, 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 in the context in which it's being used. This is not us, an awesome place. And that's an, a, 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 another favorite American term. It's awesome, it's awesome. I don't think they realize what it really means. It's now so common. So let us go out as the wheat of the world, the salt of the earth, to make a difference, to support others, but also to be always wary that you are always surrounded by weeds and that no matter what you do, you can get rid of them. But guess what? If you are rooted on Christ, you are safe. Because Christ is our cornerstone. On him alone we stand. Amen. to sing our next hymn, number 21, followed by our prayer.
please sit or kneel for our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly and most gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here in church this morning. We thank you for your grace, your mercy in our lives, for guiding us through these uncertain times and giving us the portion of your love you serve to us daily. Lord, in your mercy, Dear Father God, through your tender mercy we put before you the people of the world who have the authority, power and leadership to govern your people, your children. We put before you world leaders, especially our UK government, its leader, Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his cabinet. We put before you our Queen, Queen Elizabeth and the monarchy and her family. We put before you those leading our churches, our archbishops, our bishops, clergy and laity, and all those who serve in the church, especially those seeking to instate new leaders at this particular time in our own diocese of Chelmsford, a new bishop. We put before you leaders of our public services, especially frontline workers in every area, and particularly those tasked with the responsibility with end of life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Dear Father God, these positions of authority, we know that they come with integrity, trust and love for your people. And so therefore we pray, Lord, that all those in these positions will be looking to you, Lord, to be in their midst when they are in positions to discern, to give wisdom, and to be truthful in all that they do. Help them, Lord, to always do what is right and what is good to be the wheat of this society. Help them, Lord, to be strong when they, are feel, when they are feeling weak and lift them up, Lord, when they are feeling down. We pray especially for our own Reverend Canon Addy and his family here at Emmanuel and all those who serve on the PCC committee. Help us, Lord, to feel the power of your Holy Spirit as you continue to lead us all as parishioners and those serving in the church back to your place of worship here at Emmanuel. Help us, Lord, to build, to continue to build as we continue to serve you during these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Dear Father God, our comforter and our healer, at this time, we humble ourselves even more before you, Lord. We come to you, Lord. We bring our broken hearts to your throne, our weary and withering selves. Restore us, Lord. Heal us, Lord. Mold us back together, Lord. And gather us into your loving arms as we grieve the loss of many things, loved ones, jobs, homes, children, fellowship with others, and grave concerns about the future. We also bring before you those who are sick, those who are sadly dying, those who are very concerned about their health, still awaiting treatment, and those who are recovering from COVID, only you, Lord, can give full recovery to our souls and our bodies. But so important, Lord, to fill our souls with your love, your peace, 
and your spirit so that we can fully feel the true benefits of your comforting and healing power. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Father God, we thank you for your love for us and for especially our children. We bring to you our concerns for all our children around the world and especially here at Emmanuel. We pray for those who are most vulnerable, those who are worried for their future, which has been impacted greatly by the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Dear Lord, please release them from their pain and suffering. Give them hope. Help them, Lord, to see the light at the end of the tunnel, to be renewed and transformed during these times, even though it has been difficult, to be refilled, to be refocused, and encourage them, Lord, we pray to know you, that you are their guiding strength and their guiding light and star in the darkness, in all they wish for and all they wish to do. Take their hands, Lord, and please show them your merciful way. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And at this point, we pray, Lord, that as we offer up this silence for everyone to bring their personal petition, their prayers, their concerns to you, to go before you, Lord, with open and humble hearts as you await to hear their prayer. In this silence, please offer up your prayers to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our hearts listening to our concerns. Only you, Lord, know what you have planned for us ahead. And we pray, Lord, that we will hear you when you call us in our time of need, showing us the way, showing us where you want us to be, that you have pulled us out of the weeds and made us wheat so that we can grow in love and strength according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God is love. And those who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. Let us share the peace with one another. It's a bit different, but peace be with you all. Peace be with you. And now, Cantor will sing number 564 for us from Peace for Today's Church. Christ our cornerstone. 64. Not 05. 
564. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Lord through whom you have created all things, who was sent by your great goodness to be our Savior, by the power of the Holy Spirit into flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, he put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you, Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of them, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying,
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Though this is of as you drink it, the remembrance of it. Red is a mystery of faith.
have led us to the living water, refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. And now for our weekly offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this offering received and those received through the gift aid. Thank you, Lord, for the hands that have given this money. And we pray, Lord, we'll use it wisely in this church for your good. In Jesus' name we pray. Church. For those of you, if it's your first time, it's so lovely to see some new faces in church, and it's so encouraging that we are all here this morning. So we just pray that others will be encouraged and feel confident to come back to church. We are social distancing. If you have any concerns about going to church and you want to know what's going on or how things are, please do get in touch with myself or Reverend Lee. We'll be more than happy to help you along in coming back to church. But it's very, very encouraging to see us all in church this morning. It's really wonderful. So we look forward to seeing some more new faces. The other notice I'd like to give is if you are um, wanting to give your collection and you want to know the bank details of Emmanuel Church, please do get in touch with myself or Reverend Addy because I'm sure you've been storing up all your little pennies so that we can continue to build our church because obviously we need to pay our bills even though we're not here but so that when we do return and we all are here once again united as one church that the doors are still open so please bear in mind the church um, needs to keep standing so that once we are all back we have a church to come back to so i hope you all have a good week and hopefully we'll see more of you in church next week Thank you. We remain standing for the final blessing. Christ, who has nourished us with himself the living bread, make you one in praise and love and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you and all your loved ones, now and forever. Amen. And our final hymn is number 482, Rejoice the Lord is King. Rejoice the Lord is King, your Lord Oh.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. 